consultants how to manage to make it as good as it can be. Um, for best possible performance, everything must be taken into consideration. Um, the best practice in the corporate world uh, has been really to maximize for profit and to not take into consideration a lot of the other things. Um, the other metric that is used a lot for performance is the idea of GDP growth. GDP growth is good, corporate profits are good, and stock markets are good, but that does not mean that everything is good. Um, the other thing that is a problem is that uh, trying to get high performance in a single silo of my area where I, I manage my own little bit of the business or my own little bit of the, of, of the economic system, that that is, def is good for the world is, is something of a fallacy. So who am I? Um, you know, I, I, I describe myself as being in the fourth quarter of my life. Um, and the interesting thing about that is that the progress of science and technology in my lifetime has been absolutely amazing. And a whole lot of other things have changed in the world. Many of them are way better than they were, but um, not all. Um, in the first quarter I was growing up, I learned engineering, I learned economics, I went to Cambridge, I qualified as a chartered accountant uh, with Cooper Brothers in London, which is now part of PricewaterhouseCoopers. Um, and then in the second quarter I had a fairly fast track career in corporate management, mainly in the United States. Uh, worked in a lot of different industries, engineering, construction, iron and steel, pulp and paper, consumer products, electronics, marine fisheries. Um, had the chance to see a lot of the world. Um, and that was all about improving profit profitability. Frankly, I was quite good at it because I was an engineer who knew uh, accounting. Uh, I fixed the accounts by fixing the factory fixing the products. So it was real profit improvement, not just um, profit improvement by fiddling the, the numbers. Um, my third quarter was doing consulting work, did work mainly internationally, um, a, a lot of it with the World Bank, with the UN. Um, and the interesting thing about this period was that I realized how incredibly weak the management systems are in this sector compared to the management systems that were customary in the corporate world. Um, you know, frankly, I, I was extremely impressed with the ability of corporate management systems to get the company to do what the company needed for the company to make money. Um, management information systems have were improved enormously in the in the first quarter of my uh, second quarter of my career um, and then in the third quarter of my career I saw how uh, this was not applied in the essentially in the public sector. So I'm now in the fourth quarter um, I'm still independent, doing a little bit of consulting, less traveling. Uh, and my main focus is to rethink the metrics of management so that the fantastic potential of modern technology can be harnessed to enable faster progress and much better performance in what is a very, very complex global socio-environment economic system. Um, so, what is the state of play uh, at this point in, in history? There's a lot that is amazingly good, fantastic technological progress, considerable growth of GDP and financial wealth, a substantial reduction in global poverty and poverty-related issues, and um, a significant improvement in global health and education. But many things that should be a whole lot better 
uh, social issues of all sorts are emerging and frankly not being addressed very, very significantly. Increased wealth and income disparities, increasing violence, much of it highly organized, uh, migration and refugee mo movements, uh, growing disaffection with the political establishment, and uh, society not really too, uh, too uh, approving of the behavior of the corporate establishment. There are also environmental issues of all sorts that are emerging and not being addressed. Obviously, greenhouse gases and the related climate change. Uh, there's land degra degradation and reduction in ecosystem service capacity. Water shortages and water quality degradation. Air pollution and other ge greenhouse gases. Loss of biodiversity and so on. Um, so most, but, but, but most of modern quality of life has come about because of amazing technological progress and productivity imp improvement, which has been amazing, but all in the corporate sector. The future, I argue, depends more than anything else that in, d d on the decisions that are going to be made by leaders in the corporate sector and the big question is, will they make the right decisions? So the idea of the triple bottom line was a step towards having the corporate world think about people and planet as well as profit. Uh, John Elkington is credited with originating this idea in the 1990s, um, and it's, um, it's, it's become somewhat um, popular, shall we say. But the idea of the triple bottom line is a beginning and not an end. Um, in fact, I would argue that the triple bottom line sometimes is a little bit more of a distraction. Um, and in large part, this is because uh, it has a, a, think, a focus only on the performance of the organization. And I argue that the bigger need is for the performance of the organization to be put in a context um, with all the other stakeholders in this global socio-enviro-economic system. It's very complex and um, it, 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 it needs uh, far better measures and metrics than we currently have. Um, but there's a lot of work going on in the uh, area of um, measurement and, and the management of impact. Um, Caring uh, recently published um, uh, an environmental profit and loss account. Uh, it, it, Puma, one of their units, um, produced one in 2010. Um, Caring has now produced one for the whole company. Um, but it, and it's good work but it's very slow and it's very expensive. Um, there are also lots and lots of initiatives around to um, report on the people and uh, planet dimensions of company performance. Uh, the GRI, the Global Reporting Initiative, uh, it's in its fourth generation at the moment. Uh, there's a uh, an initiative called Integrated Reporting in the UK, um, the SASB, Sustainability Accounting Standards Boards, and so on. Um, these are, 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 are good initiatives, but they are difficult to do, they cost a lot of money, and at the end of the day, they're, um, they're, they're, they're not a, a, what I like to call accounting, they are uh, the reporting of, of questionnaires more, as, uh, more than anything else. Um, the, the, they don't use the, the powerful concepts that exist in the old established conventional accounting which has this amazing double entry feature which uh, very clearly differentiates between state and flow and um, has actually been around since the 1200s, uh, quite a long time, about 800 years, 
uh, it was first written about in the 1400s and f hasn't really changed very much since. And, you know, I sort of argue that maybe this is the time for, um, for um, uh, accounting, uh, impact accounting 2.0. Um, the, 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 the double entry concept also makes it possible to get a lot of useful data, information from less data. Um, so let me just quickly get into what is the concept of state and flow. In accounting terms, this is the balance sheet versus the profit and loss account. So you've got the value at the beginning of the period, the value at the end of the period, you've got activities in the middle, and this example is no change, steady state. Now here we have the value at the end of the period goes up nicely. And this is positive progress. In this case, the value at the end of the period relative to the beginning goes down. Oops, there's a problem. Um, so th those three represent steady state, positive progress, or deterioration of state. Um, and no information about the activities is needed to, in order to understand progress. Only information about the changes in state allows you to measure progress. Now, um, there are three things we're interested in. We're interested in state, we're interested in progress, and we're interested in performance. Uh, state is the change in the balance sheet of the entity at a moment in time. Progress is the balance sheet changes between the beginning and the end of the period. Performance is a measurement that relates progress to the resources consumed. So this picture sort of explains it a little bit. You've got the small value at the beginning of the period. You've got the big value at the end of the period. The difference is the impact value created, and then some resources are consumed to do that, and um, you, can, you can measure efficiency by how much is done for the money, but you can measure, measure effectiveness by the incremental value for the cost. There's another set of numbers which are it's important to be very clear about. The difference between cost, price, and value. Um, cost is what it costs, but the price is what you pay for something, and essentially cost plus profit equals price. A buy-sell transaction takes place at a price, the buy price becomes the buyer's cost. Now we've got a lot of data about price. Um, the data about cost is usually always internal to the organization um, and is very important. Now value is also a very important idea but almost never quantified. Um, we buy something because we think the value is higher to us is higher than the price that is that is being charged but that that is a, is something that is at the moment very much left to a subjective assessment um, the this is a, a very old picture I did this over 15 years ago I think uh, cost uh, low cost, high price, profit margin, value adding to society, value adding to value adding ex value exceeding cost and you see the, the, the different images for the example one value adding, example two value adding where much more goes into society because the price is relatively low and then the value destruction model where the price is lower than the cost, the loss is being made, um, and the, there's also the value of the thing is nothing is low. So you've got value destruction in every which way. Um, one of the interesting things, if you look at doing the value adding 
idea, the value adding version one, that was the way the global economy worked 30, 40 years ago, whereas value adding two is much more, uh, I'm sorry, the other way around. Value adding two is, is um, the way it was many years ago. Value adding one is basically the way it is now. Um, profit margins have gone up enormously because productivity has gone up. And this has been very, very good for the corporate world, for the ownership community. It has not been that good for society in, in um, overall. So uh, I have a, a, a problem with money as a measure. Um, the problem with money is that it, it, it really isn't a measure. It's really a, a result of what goes on in a market for money. Um, uh, the, in engineering and society, measure is um, very strictly divide, defined, and the, the measure is constant no matter what changes in the surrounding system. A meter is always a meter, a kilogram is always a kilogram, but not so with money. Um, money is is a result of what really goes on in the market. Um, however, money and conventional money-based accounting has been an extremely effective tool for managing performance in the business setting, and uh, this accounting and money system is still at the core of all corporate MIS management information systems. One of the tricks or the tools in accounting is the idea of costing, and specifically standard costing. Um, standard costs um, are a way that a, a lot of information can be um, con concentrated into a smaller number of no smaller uh, numerical footprint, shall we say. Um, and it, 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 it enables the performance to be re related to what you expect. Now, the standard cost that is, is used, the standard cost idea is used in the corporate world all the time, um, but we don't have um, standard values being used. Um, now, another feature of, of uh, conventional money-based accounting is that it is extremely efficient in enabling summaries. Um, I, I often use the phrase that General Electric, which employs, I don't know, 300,000 people, can summarize its financial performance in, in a couple of pages. One page of balance sheet, one page of profit and loss, and you can summarize this huge company's performance in a couple of pages. Um, and at the same time, the management information system allows drill down to every possible detail in the, in the business, the business unit, the department, the process, the product, um, time series, all sorts of information can be obtained uh, in, in one system uh, of, of management information. Um, Now, you know, money does a wonderful job for profit and wealth and business performance uh, in the profit sense, but it, this measure completely ignores everything to do with human life and quality of life. Uh, it also includes everything, excludes everything that relates to the impact on the environment and the natural systems upon which everything depends. Um, the, these are sometimes referred to as externalities, the rules of accountancy basically uh, make you put a boundary around the company and you only report on what is being done in, in the company. Peter Drucker, the uh, famous management guru, he coined the phrase, you manage what you measure years ago. And uh, I must admit, I subscribe totally to that idea. 
So financial reporting is strictly limited to the financial progress and performance of the reporting entity. What happens before, beyond the reporting boundary has no re reporting effect on the entry entity, none. Um, and frankly, this is a system that I argue is inadequate for the modern world where externalities are of consequence. Um, the, the moment if, if a, a transaction does not have a money dimension, uh, it might as well not exist. And this is patently absurd, absurd in, a, in, a, in, a, in a world where natural resources are being depleted, the environment degraded, and we have extremely large-scale economic activities, uh, not to mention the huge impact that business decisions have on society at large, people. So we, we really don't have measures that um, handle the issues of human quality of life. Um, we don't have measures that are uh, useful for the natural systems upon which everything depends, the carbon cycle, the water cycle, land use, and various nutri nutrient cycles. Um, so, you know, we, we, we've, we've got to do something at some point to bring uh, something into um, a way of man managing the, these externalities and quantifying them. Um, so standard values have now got to come into play. We've got to start quantifying these things that we don't normally um, want to quantify. Specifically, we've got to start to fi figure out how to quantify impact on human life and the quality of life, human capital. Um, We've got to sort of have some measures that are quantified measures for these these various cycles. Um, this is a, a, a quick image of, of some um, oil pollution in the Niger Delta. The Niger Delta is uh, a, a, a place I worked in a long time ago. Um, I wasn't working in the oil industry, I was actually working in um, artisanal fisheries, local fisheries, and um, you know the the Niger Delta is covered in 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 a huge amount of uh, oil pollution, um, which has completely ruined the livelihoods of um, a huge community of of, of local people, um, and it is it's not part of the, any accounting. It's just happening, and it happens, and doesn't matter. It, it, and it, it's it's something of a not not good, you know. I don't like it. So um, what what we we've, we're we're doing is looking at not only the financial capital part of a global system, but looking at human capital, uh, what we refer to as man-built capital, natural capital. And there's also another piece of this uh, system, the socio-enviro-economic system, and it's because it's the sun. Without the sun, nothing is possible. Um, the, hum the financial uh, accounts do a very good job of describing economic activity but it's really only to do with the financial capital. Um, you know, financial accounts describe economic activity in financial or money terms while completely ignoring impact on everything else. I made this picture a long time ago. Um, on the left-hand side is the beginning, uh, uh, the beginning uh, state. Right-hand side is the end of uh, period state and in the middle of various activities and it was the beginning of me trying to describe and set out all the flows. But this is actually what money measures. It only measures a little bit 
of this whole system. And expecting this little bit of, of money measurement to get everything right in this system, I think is, is, is not going to work. So we've got the financial accounts. What we need to do is to figure out the impact that these various bits of the financial accounts actually deliver in terms of positive impact uh, into society. And then as well as that, we've got to figure out the negative impacts of all the things that are in our P&L that have uh, the impacts they have on the various aspects of the man-built capital and of the natural capital. Um, and they all need to be, they all, they, it all needs to be done together. So um, the, for the corporate organization, you've got your financial balance sheet, you've got your P&L, you've got balance sheet changes, a new, new balance sheet. Um, and then you've got the impacts on the externalities, the impact on people, the impact on the, um, on the uh, man-built capital, and the impact on natural capital. Um, the reporting envelope at the moment is, is just the, the, um, the small piece uh, that's got the brownish background. But in fact, we really should be looking at corporate performance in both the financial and the impact on the externalities. In order for all of this to be done, everything down in the impact area has got to be numbered. And that is um, something that we're a long way from at the moment. It's, 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 it's a bit of a challenge, but it's got to be done in order for impact to become as important uh, in the conversation as the, the, the money profit. So you've got supply chains. We do a, a pretty good job of figuring out uh, the profit and the price flows of the of the um, of the of the value of the supply chain. Um, you know, it, it, it's it, it's if if the if the if the price is is low and the product is is good quality, we buy it. Uh, but along the way. Um, that there's, there, are, there are impacts at each of these stages as well as there are um, financial profits. So the, the system has got to be upgraded so that we can get not only the financial dimension sort of on the record, but the impact along the supply chain on the human capital people, on the man-built systems and on the natural capital. So um, the system has got to talk about profit and impact for the organization as a whole, uh, for discrete units in the organization, for processes that are used in transformation, for products through their life cycle, for people and their quality of life, and for place, um, because place really is where um, uh, the you know everything comes together. Place is where you can see things. A planet is 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 too big a, a an entity, and it, it doesn't really mean it, it can't. It's difficult to comprehend. But place is is very easy. You can walk around the place. You can see. Uh, good performance, you can see bad performance, you can see pollution, you can see uh, companies that are doing their best to manage their processes in, in the best possible way. So we've got to optimize for everything in the socioeconomic system in order to get 
best, bottom, best possible triple bottom line results. Um, I argue that companies and corporate organizations are the most efficient way to implement transformation. Um, they, they applied technology systems thinking and cost accounting they use are very highly developed and the results are amazing. But, um, you know, while profits are maximized and company valuations are high, we can make products can be made abundantly, uh, but society actually has now more unemployment than it, it, is, than it, it, it really should. Um, environment is being degraded and there is resource depletion. The latter two are, are, are not in the accounting and they should be. So everything in a company that has an impact not only on the profit of the enterprise but also on society, people and the natural world, environment, planet. Um, I don't know, how's the time doing? I, um, I'm, I'm timeless. Hang on a moment. Well, you have her in about How do I find out what time? It is? Sorry? Because you have 10 minutes to conclude. Well, um, okay. Um, I'm, I'm just going to quickly go through to go to a different uh, uh, slide set, so bear with me one second. Um, Let me just um, run quickly through through this um, because the the idea of doing um, money type accounting for the three dimensions uh, the socio the social the environment and the economic as three pieces that are one system is um, I think a key to getting a game changer in in what's going on is that we can do amazing things with uh, the technology we have we've got amazing management systems for the corporate area but we've not got very good uh, management systems for the social and environmental dimension of, of everything. So, people. There's a lot of people. You know, we've got seven, you know, in, in, in 1900, there were 1.7 billion people. Um, last year, that number turned around and became 7.1 billion people. So there's a lot of people on this planet and um, that is both a good thing and a not so good thing. So we, the environment, um, the planet, uh, the sun, the planet, the wildlife, the natural trees and the fauna, the fauna and the flora, hugely important. Man-built capital, well, you know, government is man-built. Uh, uh, the law, justice, is man-built. Cities are man-built. Um, industry, uh, manufacturing process, steel mills, are man-built. Um, transport and, and the, uh, the whole sort of movement of goods is man-built. Movement of goods. Man built. Now, you know, absolutely amazing stuff is man built, but actually, it is not anything like as complicated and as clever as the natural world. So, this is a bit of history. So, let's look at, at what happened with people, economic, man built capital, and natural capital environment. Um, if we start off years ago, 
people small, man built capital small, natural capital, you know, huge. As time went on, human capital, man built capital got bigger and bigger, natural capital stayed pretty much the same. Um, until we actually, human people are, are much better off, more of us, quality of life way better than it was 200 years ago. But man-built capital is now starting to um, be a problem on top of natural capital. And in fact, it heads in this direction. And in we have, we're in danger of actually losing the, the uh, quality of life uh, of, of, of human, the human dimension because man-built capital is crushing natural capital and this is, frankly, a trajectory to disaster. Uh, this has got to be changed, got to be changed to this, where natural capital is, is in reasonable balance with man-built capital, where human capital is, uh, quality of life is great, number of people is not a problem because, uh, frankly, we've figured out how to uh, optimize the system so that people are progressing. Man-built capital, NBC, is efficient and the planet is healthy. That's where we're trying to go. So to manage change, we have to have metrics for all the components of the system. And this is the background to multi-dimension impact accounting. Uh, and we're the MDI system is tracking impact on all the components of the system, not just the money-based financial metrics. Um, and I, we go back to this, you've seen these already. Um, so I think that's about as much as I have to say at this point. Um, I'm happy to answer as many questions as you want. Uh, okay, folks, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Burgess, for your interesting presentation. Folks, we are now open for the question and answers. So if you have any questions, you could type it in the question box or you could raise your hand. There's a hand icon available in your console, so if you click on it, we can talk to Mr. Burgess also. Let me go to the first question we have from Claudia Freed. The question is, you didn't mention the role of government in how financial impact is measured. Do you think that tax laws can be modified to put the correct incentives to move corporations towards your model? The one of the one, one taxes is an interesting subject. Um, I, I didn't include it in the presentation, but um, one of the things that I uh, I talk about is the idea of the uh, the supply chain of products, and then the use, and then the 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 waste of products. But I have another dimension, which is to look at the life cycle assessment of, um, of profit. Uh, there are good products, you know, that, that have a, a good product uh, supply chain, a good use, and a good uh, post-use waste uh, Process. So you've got products that have got uh, a good reputation, if you will, and, and, and good impact. Now you can also have um, the, uh, the, the profit having a, a good provenance, a good history, and it, it eventually being used in a good way. Uh, the, there, there is a dimension of decision making in the corporate world and in the ownership of profit 
where that profit is actually used for very good things. If I can use the example, uh, uh, and you know, I'm I'm not a native of Saudi Arabia, as I think you've probably gathered, but let's look at the use of profit in Saudi Arabia. Um, and the use of taxation or the government, if you will, uh, earning revenues from the oil industry. Those revenues have actually been used to create modern Saudi Arabia. Uh, I mean, the, the, the great architecture that now exists in Saudi Arabia wouldn't exist if those profits hadn't been used in a quote-unquote good way. Um, um, I, I use the example of, of Norway's wealth fund, which is um, sovereign wealth fund, which again is trying to use the, the profits from the oil industry or the revenues from the oil industry to, to, to enable a, you know, a better world in different ways. Uh, taxation um, can should be um, a a both a a it's a, it's obviously a a negative it reduces profit but it doesn't um, but then it, it it the the use of taxes then becomes a a social good uh, and the the good is is a good thing. Um, I think we've got to be careful. Of, there's a lot of criticism of high taxes are bad for the, you know, bad for the economy. They're not necessarily bad for society. But I think the, one of the problems that we've got with taxes going into government is that many governments are incredibly inefficient. Right at the beginning of my, you know, when I was talking about my own history, I was appalled at the. Uh, the, the inadequate management systems that exist in most governments. Uh, a corporation would go out of business so fast if it operated in those ways, but governments don't, and governments have, have completely archaic management systems, and they are incredibly inefficient. But they are needed, and they, they, they the, the you know, tax flows into government should be doing efficient things that are good for society and good for the environment. Um, so, you know, uh, I, actually I jumped over one section which is in the slide set, but I decided not to do it because I, I, it would have taken too long, but every line in the profit and loss account has, can be translated into an impact. So actually, in that set, there is one on taxation, which basically says that taxation is a, a debit to profit, but it's actually a credit to society because government has money to pay for the things that it needs to be done, it needs to do. Answer the question. Has raised a hand also Claudia Freed. Uh, could you please introduce yourself and ask the question if you have any? Uh, because you've raised your hand if you have any supplementary question. Okay, now uh, thank you for the answer. So let me move to another question from Mr. Arthur Richard. The question is while tracking metrics has some value. The human capital and enviro capital is almost entirely beyond our control. Your comments, please. Well, um, it, it is it, the, the idea of, of uh, control is interesting. Um, one of the, the realities is that we are working with a very complex system. And in order to manage a system, you've really got to use a systems approach. Um, so, 
you know, it, it, it really is no, no single big decision is ever going to be right in a complex system mathematically. However, um, getting the system to move in the right direction can be done and it can be done reliably. You can't do a a 50-year plan and get an answer that makes any sense, that is reliable. But you can move in the right direction and that can be reliable. The maths works. So rather than trying to get big decisions that are um, that that are complex and you know get politics gets involved and and you you can try and get uh, break it down and and try and get at the lowest possible level a decision that is better than uh, you know is as good as it can be and in 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 some ways this is what Adam Smith the famous economist who, or the founder of modern economics, if you will, he wrote in 1776 about how the market economy works. And he, he, his position was that when everybody works on their own self-interest, we actually get the best possible outcome. And um, in many ways, that is what we're going back to here. We're going back to the idea that the if if we all understand there is an economic dimension, there is an environmental dimension, and there is a social dimension, and we all make the best possible decisions we we can, it will actually add up to a good outcome. Um, it, but it, it it's got to be measured in a proper way. I mean, I, I'm subscribed to the idea that, manage, that management metrics are very powerful. They are as powerful when they are measuring the wrong thing as they are powerful when they're measuring the right thing. So we've got to start to move towards getting a, 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 a system of metrics that is much nearer right than we have at the moment, where we've only got money as the measure. Um, you know, human beings have have value. They are an asset. Um, how can we get it so that a person, a family, a society, a nation, a world, where people are are working to get themselves better, but without doing damage to the society and doing damage to the environment, and where the goal isn't simply to make money wealth component. You know, I'm not against money wealth, but I think money wealth and environmental behavior and social behavior all have got to be in the same, you know, on the same scale. Um, and that does not mean that I think that social values have got to be measured in money. They need to be measured in a way that allows them to be added up and disaggregated as money accounting is, and same with the environment. Um, you know, we've got a lot of measures starting to emerge around the science of the environment. At the moment, they're very, very complicated. They're very complex. And scientifically, they're very, they're very solid, but they are not easy to add up to summarize. And we've got to summarize, and we should be able to summarize, in my view, for the company, you know, for the product, for the process, for the place, and so on. So you know, many perspectives, same data, but looked at in many different ways, and. The, the, you know, when you add up seven billion people, you get an answer. <laughs> uh, you, you know, it adds up, and, and you know, I'm unhappy actually because I think we've got 
far too many people on the planet today who are poor, in, a, in abject poverty, who are stressed in a whole variety of ways, yet we have a wealthy planet. What is going on? We can do better. Okay, thank you very much, and thank you, Mr. Arthur Richard, for the question. Let me move to one last question that we have from Mr. Shirin, uh, Shir Shindu Chakrabarti. The question is, how this TBL concept can be applied for project process reporting using EVM techniques? Sorry, could you repeat the last bit? This TBL concept can be applied for project process reporting using EVM techniques. Well, okay. Um, the 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 need is for us to to we we've got to get. Um, not quite, quite the best way to answer this. Um, one of the things that is interesting to me is that you know most corporate accounting systems at the moment are are um, very developed, uh, very developed systems, and uh, it it's entirely possible to sit a a social impact an environmental impact module on top of these systems uh, SAP for example SAP uh, has done this um, I I don't know a huge amount um, I don't know a huge amount about the SAP uh, product um, but it, it, it's it's going in the right direction um, the one of the things that I feel very strongly about is that um, we've got to somehow have an internal system that respects corporate privacy, competitive advantage, if you will, and at the same time allows for public accountability and I think we can do that uh, by having a an open source standard value framework and the standard value framework that applies for things like the processes that a company uses um, a company that moves from a, a, a process that has a, a rather um, rather poor profile, standard profile, um, then um, to one that is has a standard value, to a process that has a standard value with a much better profile, um, that move can be reported, but you don't have to you know the, the the privacy of the of, of of you know the detail doesn't have to be um, you know that that doesn't have to be in in play um, the the, um, the what what is interesting about nearly you know nearly everything is I, I you've got to be very careful as you simplify which you've got to do, but at the same time you've got to avoid simplicity. Um, the, you know, one of my grumbles with the analysis of big data is that big data tends to get uh, an answer that, you know, it will it will it will give you an answer about causality uh, about. Um, um, Oh, I'm having a senior moment. Uh, it, it won't give you causality. It will give you correlation. Uh, in in management, we need to be clear, get clearer about 
causality. And we need to be doing things that, that change the trajectory of, of where we're going. So I, you know, I, I'd love to answer that question, you know, in, in, in specifics, but in general, you know, that's a general response to the question. It's, it's not a, it's not very specific, I'm afraid. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Burgess. Uh, uh, this brings us towards the end of the webinar. So I would like to thank you on behalf of the Medina Institute for Leadership and Entrepreneurship, MAD. So any concluding remarks that you would like to give before we dismiss out, sir? Well, I have one, if I can quickly get to it, I have one quick remark that I would love to make, if I can get to it quickly. Sure. Um, hold on a moment. Uh, come on. My computer is slowing down. I'm not quite sure why. Voila. Hold on one second. Hold on. Oops. So this is what I wanted to do. <laughs> Thank you, Medina, for letting me do this. And, uh, and uh, you know, I hope it's been somewhat useful. That's, that is really nice. Very, very thoughtful of you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, really want to thank you on behalf of the mile and uh, for a very intriguing presentation. Indeed, a very different one also. Hopefully, it was very in, and um, uh, quite an interactive one, at, uh, indeed. May, may, I, may I say one little last thing? Sure, sir. By all means. One of the nice things about being, you know, older, is that you don't have a future. And because you don't have a future, you can start to say what you really need to say, rather than worrying about your 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 career or what have you. And I, I honestly feel passionately that if we can really change the way we, we do the metrics, we will win. And, uh, you know, the CEOs of many companies now are talking about very, very important things for society, very, very important things for the environment. But, I, you know, I used to be a CFO, and the CFOs are still stuck with having to do you know, by regulation, by compliance rules and all the rest of it, financial accounting, which is not good enough for the 21st century. So thank you for letting me do this, and, um, well, thank you. Well, oh, sir, once again, thank you very much, and let me also take a liberty to say the future is all yours, and hopefully we will be doing another webinar in last in next one decades every day with you, and the future will be always with you, sir. <laughs> Inshallah. <laughs> So thank you very much, and thank you all of those who participated in this webinar and for posing the interesting questions. Uh, we are recording this webinar, which will be uploaded on Mild Community. You can download the soft copy of the presentation, which is available on uh, community.mild.org. Please stay tuned to the upcoming webinars by signing up on webinar.mild.org. Thank you.